This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today we are taking a look at the ultimate Shadow Heart build for Baldur's Gate 3. Let's get to it. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the build, we got a few things to discuss. First off, this build is designed so that it doesn't screw up any of Shadow Heart's storyline, so that means we have to keep her first level as a cleric. We could actually optimize this build even more if she wasn't a cleric, but she is, so that's what we're sticking with for our first level. The second thing I want to point out so I don't waste your time is that this is is not a support build. This is a 100% full on, she's a monster damage dealer build. If you are looking for her to play a support role, I will link a build down in the description that will work that also starts with Cleric that is my ultimate support build. All right, now that we got all that out of the way, let's jump into the details. So like I said, starting off, she is going to be a Cleric. For your cantrips, choose whichever ones you like the best. However, I suggest Sacred Flame, Guidance, and Produce Flame. Then we're choosing the Nature Domain, and we're doing this for a few different reasons. First off, it allows us to wear heavy armor. We're not always going to wear heavy armor, but it's gonna help us a lot in the early game. Later on, you're gonna pick up armor, which is gonna be much more suited to the build, but early game, your options are limited and heavy armor is going to be really nice and keep you from getting hit very much. It also allows us to equip a shield, which is also just going to improve our AC even more. The other reason is it gets us some nice utilitarian stuff here. So it gets us the ability to speak with animals, which is a nice thing to have in your party if you don't already have it. And it also gives us the animal friendship spell. The other thing that this does for us is it gives us the ability to pick a single cantrip from the druid cantrips. And the one that we're after here is the thorn whip cantrip. Because we're going to be a very close range melee fighter, this is a super handy cantrip to have in order to get enemies to you if they are hard to reach. Later on in the game, if you make certain choices and you gain certain abilities, this may not be as useful to you, but early game, it's going to be super useful in a lot of different situations. Trust me. Now let's talk about where we want to put our ability points. Now, our ability points are going to change. You actually need to respec this build when you pick up a certain item, but that item is later on in the game in chapter three. You're going to do a majority of your leveling with the stats that I'm going to show you now, and you want to put 16 in strength, 12 into dexterity, 14 into constitution, and 16 into wisdom. And why we are putting where we are putting all of these points will make a lot more sense as I talk about leveling up the build. At level two, you are going to dual class into monk. However, you're not going to immediately start playing as a monk. I highly advise at this point in the game just to continue playing as you would a cleric. You're going to have access to a nice chunk of cleric spells and you're going to have the wisdom to back it up so that those spells can hit their targets or heal for a decent amount. Just find the heaviest armor you can find and a shield and whatever weapon you want to use and run around beating stuff with your weapon and playing as a cleric. With the ability to every once in a while use one of your key points and a bonus action action to smack something with your hand for a little bit of extra damage. Now at level four, that will put you at monk level three. At monk level three, you get to pick your subclass and we are going to choose the subclass way of the open hand. Now at this point, you can drop using a weapon. Do not drop the shield, do not drop the heavy armor. I would hold on to both of those because it's going to make you a lot harder to hit and you're really not going to lose anything from it. The only thing you lose from equipping heavy armor as a monk is a little bit of additional move speed that you're not really going going to notice not having. What you will notice is that you have a really high armor class and you can hold a shield and help that armor class and nothing can hit you while you run around slapping things upside the head with your bare fist. You do want to prioritize anything and everything that you can find that is going to increase your unarmed damage or just give you a flat damage increase. At level five, this is going to put you at monk level four. This is when you will get to pick your first feat. This is also when you'll see a little bit of an increase in damage. For your feet, you want to pick tavern. Cavern Brawler. Cavern Brawler is going to add your strength modifier twice. Your current strength modifier should be three. This means when you hit something before you even roll the dice, you're doing three damage to it. Cavern Brawler is going to multiply that by two, meaning that you will do six damage to anything you hit before you even roll your damage dice. The Tavern Brawler feat also gives you a point to put into strength or constitution. Just put it in whichever one you want. I like to put it in constitution so we can see a nice 15 there because 15 is a good number, but it does not matter where you put it because it's not going to make a difference. At level six, you will get the ability to attack twice, and then you will also have your bonus action attack. This means that you will get to attack three times every turn. Without any type of damage modifiers added to your stats, your base max damage possibility is 36 damage if you attack all three times. So you get your main attack action, and then you can use your bonus action for another attack. Keep in mind that is not spending any key points. If you spend your key points on any of your special attacks, you 
you actually attack two times, meaning that if you spend a key point, it is possible to attack four times in one turn. At level seven, that is going to put you at monk level six, and this is when you're going to start to see a really nice power spike because you get the ability to add either necrotic, psychic, or radiant damage to your attacks. Now, what's really nice here is because we put so many points into wisdom, we get extra damage on that magical damage that we do with our attacks now. Those attacks are buffed by your wisdom modifier, which should currently be three. At level nine, you hit monk eight, and this is when you get to choose your next feat, and you are going to choose ability improvements, and you're going to put those two points into strength. This is going to increase our strength modifier to four, which means that we will be adding an additional eight damage to our attacks, because remember that four gets multiplied by two each time we hit. So that's eight damage before we even roll the dice. And that's not counting the magic damage we get and the bonus to the magic damage that we get from our wisdom. So at this point, if you do not spend any key points, you should get to attack three times. Your max base damage should be 21. This means if you attack all three times and you manage to hit 21 all three times, your possible highest damage outcome is 63 damage in a single turn. Keep in mind here that you can spend a key point to actually attack a total of four times in a turn. Okay, so at this point, you have an option and your option is do you want this character to have more utility or do you want to go in hard on damage? If you want more support and some more cleric spells, put the remaining levels that you have into cleric. This is also going to get you an additional feat. I would put that feat point into resilience and choose constitution. That's going to get you an additional point in constitution, bumping your constitution up to 16 and helping to ensure that you can hold all those concentration spells when you're getting hit. And if you choose this route, the build's going to be okay. Just okay. It's not going to feel terrible and it's not going to feel amazing like you're breaking the game. If you want to feel amazing like you're breaking the game, you want to put your next three levels into row. Now, you do sacrifice a feat here. So for this build, it'll only be a two feet build if you do this. But that's okay because you don't really need that other feat because you're going to be destroying everything. So at level 12, that will put you at rogue level three. And at rogue level three, you get to choose your subclass and you're going to choose thief. This gets you an additional bonus action. This makes you a monster. Let me explain to you what happens here and how insane this can be. Your basic attack action, you get to hit two times. Then you have two bonus actions, which you can spend key points in order to use both bonus actions to hit a total of four times. This allows you six attacks in one turn. Now, even if you don't do this and you don't want to spend your key points, every turn is four attacks for you if you want it. But because you have those bonus actions and we spec into rogue, you also have the ability to hide. When you initially spec into the rogue class, you get to choose some proficiencies. You want to make sure you put those proficiency points into stealth. This ensures that you can hide right in front of somebody super easy in the middle of battle. You could very easily walk up to someone, punch them in the face three times, step to the side, and then hide. They won't be able to see you or have any idea what's going on. Then when it's your turn again, you pop up, you punch them three more times, and then you hide again. Or you can just punch them six times in the face and absolutely destroy them. You have a lot of options and a lot of flexibility with this build. Your max possible damage if you roll perfect on everything, and this is base, this is without any modifiers, is 126 damage in a single turn. That's if you spend key points to do a total of six attacks. If you only do four attacks, your base max damage is 84 in a single turn. Now, like I said at the beginning, this isn't the min-max version of this build. Once you get to Act 3, there will be a quest called the House of Hope. All I'm going to say, keep an eye out for that quest. You need to do that quest. When you do that quest, you will find a set of gauntlets called the Gauntlets of Hill Giant Strength. They set your strength to 23. They don't add or anything like that. They just set it to 23. So it doesn't matter what your strength is unless it's higher than 23 and then they don't do nothing, but your strength probably not going to be higher than 23. Once you get these gauntlets, you are going to go back to base and you are going to respec. That respec is going to look like this. You're going to have eight points in strength, 15 points into dexterity, 16 points into constitution, and 17 points into wisdom. Now, as you are re-leveling, you are going to re-level the same with one other exception, and that is your second feat. When you hit your second feat, you are still going to choose ability improvements. However, you are going to split those points, putting one of those points into dexterity and the other into wisdom. This will put you at 16 dexterity and 18 wisdom, giving you increased armor as well as even more damage to your magic damage because once again, remember, we get a boost to that damage based on our wisdom modifier and at this point, your wisdom modifier will be four. Once you get these gauntlets and you make this change, you are going to feel like a god being just absolutely destroying everything that is in front of you. As you can obviously see from the footage that's playing on the screen. I'm 
running around killing everything with just two people. My main character is running support while Shadow Heart just goes on a murder spree. Another thing I want to point out here is that if you are attacking and you are using your bonus action to just do a normal basic attack and you're not spending a key point, you want to alternate between your attacks. So you want to do a main action attack, then use a bonus action, then a main action attack, and then use a bonus action. If you just do both of your main action attacks back to back, you will only get one bonus action. You need to alternate them in order to get the four attacks total. Now you can use whatever items you want to use for this build, except for the gloves. The gloves are kind of mandatory if you want the best of the best damage, but the items that I'm using and the items that you're seeing her use in this video for the head, we have the mask of soul perception. Our cloak is the cloak of cunning broom. Chest piece is the vest of soul rejuvenation. Gauntlets are the gauntlets of hill giant strength. Obviously, as I already mentioned, boots are the boots of the uninhibited Kushingo. These actually add our wisdom modifier to our damage as if it were our strength modifier. So we get our strength modifier added twice and then we get our wisdom modifier added to our damage as well. That's basically getting added twice because it's getting added due to the boots and then it's also getting added due to our bonus that we get on our magic damage. Our necklace is the sentient amulet, then the ring of blank and the ring of eversight. The ring of eversight is really nice and pairs well with the cloak because when we dash it puts us in a cloud and we don't actually get blinded in that cloud because we're wearing the ring of eversight and we can't be blinded. But if there are any enemies right up on us, they do get blinded. And you can see we're left with the final stats of 23 strength, 16 dexterity, 16 constitution, 8 in intelligence, 18 wisdom, and 8 rizma. All right, and I think that pretty much covers everything. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more Baldur's Gate content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.